Welcome to this Six Steps to Successful Watercolours. This is a step-by-step -step watercolour waterfall tutorial. Welcome to my watercolour channel. I'm Karen Rice. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to subscribe to my channel where you will get updates of my latest tutorials. So, shall we get started? For a full list of all the materials I'm going to be using in this tutorial, along with a photo link, you can find this in the description below. Just click show more beneath the video or the little down arrow below the video on the right hand side. This tutorial is just a guide to give you a roadmap um, to approach a photograph and to paint a watercolour painting from it. So my first step is to start the planning process. You can do this by um, sketching in your sketchbook, thumbnail sketches to decide on the composition. You can decide on the colours that are best to use and do a tonal chart and try and match the colours to the tones and decide on all the techniques and the materials materials you want to use and it's so much more fun this way it takes the pressure off if you're interested in finding out how I sort of decided on the techniques I'm going to use the colors and the composition why not think about joining my patreon membership details about that can be found in the description below you'll also get a downloadable sketch for this painting a much more in-depth tutorial and the video is ad free and you can cancel anytime so once you've decided on your composition, sketch out your drawing, which I've done here. I'm using cold press paper. It's nine by 12 inches and it's on a block and I put some washi tape around the edge. I'm using an old brush. I've dipped it into liquid soap and I'm using masking fluid to mask out the light areas. So step two, draw your painting and mask out if necessary or appropriate any light areas and let your masking fluid dry naturally. So once your masking fluid is dry, step three is to paint light washes. So you reserve the white and light of the paper in that first stage. Now I'm painting the next lightest tonal values. In watercolour we work light to dark. I normally paint these light washes wet into wet so the soft edges really help to create depth and distance. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm putting on a wash of quinacridone gold and now I'm painting very light washes in the water using ultramarine with a little bit of Payne's Grey or you could use indigo. Um, if you check out the description below I have given you alternative colours. I'm actually using a little bit of phthalo blue as well now working damp into damp. I'm using my size 14 brush and I've mixed up a little bit of the phthalo blue, quinacridone gold, a touch of quinacridone rust and painting some of this green shade damp into damp all around the outside of my waterfall. This is some ultramarine and quinacridone magenta and I'm painting this. It looks a little bit wet in wet actually in the middle here and I dropped in some quinacridone rust just a little bit sort of damp into damp. I've mixed up some creamier darker green here. I'm using my size 6 brush painting damp into damp. You can use a mixture of ultramarine and quinacridone gold. So I've got most of my light washes on now so I've decided to use some mid-tone washes so the the paint's slightly darker now. I'm using my size 14 brush and I'm working damp, in, damp into damp with a mixture of the phthalo blue and a little bit of the quinacridone gold. Try to leave gaps, the lighter areas as well, working damp into damp here and you get some nice darks as well. I'm painting on quite creamy paint because I'm actually going to lift off using my plastic card, some of the stones and some of the texture there. I'm using a little bit of brush show as well. It's black brush show so it'll create some really nice sort of textures in the foreground there. I will put a link for a video I made all about brush show in the description below if you'd like to know more. Uh, here I am using the plastic card on the damp paint to create some light tonal values and mark making and texture. This should have been actually in, in step two, but I'm actually just peeling off some of the masking fluid with my finger. You can use a paper towel 
Um, I don't want to remove it all. I just want to use and make some little holes in there and I'm going to put a light wash in there. And I'm just going to build that up and I'm going to do that, let it dry and then repeat the process again and put mid-tone washes on. And it's just to create those sort of abstract sort of sort of shadow marks that you get in the waterfall because they're quite hard to paint freehand. So this way, as you can see, I'm just putting on very sort of dilute uh, sort of ultramarine with a touch of the quinacridone rust. Really, really dilute for this first stage using my size 6 brush, wet on dry. So I'm painting in some stones in the water here using a little bit of mid to dark tone and I'm actually working with a mid-tone wash here with my size 14 brush on the left hand side here and it's a mixture of the quinacridone gold, a little bit of yellow, a tiny touch of the Prussian blue as well, or phthalo blue. And it's just to sort of really get that lovely lush green colour on the left hand side here. This is pretty much a mid-tone and I've actually mixed up a mid to dark tone here and it's quite creamy, quinacridone gold and the phthalo blue using my size 6 brush. Just working damp into damp, just, you know, in little patches of dark, which is what you can see in the photograph as well. I thought I might use a little bit of brusho in this area as well. So I'm just sprinkling that on there. Um, you can use moss green or black or grey, any sort of light brown. And I use my plastic card, as you saw there, to scratch in and create some texture and detail. I'm just going to work my way around now using lots of mid-tone on the right hand side. So I've actually dried off my waterfall here and I'm just peeling off a little bit more masking fluid and again putting in a little bit more tone, much more of a mid-tone here, um, wet on dry. I'm actually working now just on the water using a mixture of ultramarine, a touch of pink and a really tiny touch of the quinacridone rust. And I'm painting some shadows and reflections in the water, wet on dry, using my size 6 brush. I'm using a mixture of the ultramarine here and the quinacridone magenta. Maybe a tiny touch of the green here as well, working wet into wet. Just to create this sort of lovely, sort. I love the rocks here in the centre of this photograph. It's got some lovely sort of violet and purple colours there. I sprinkled some salt on and I let everything dry naturally. My painting has dried and I'm actually going to work upside down. I thought it was an easy way to access um, on the right hand side, but it's obviously on the left hand side, um, the right way up. But I'm using a mixture of the ultramarine quinacridone magenta and the quinacridone rust, painting this mid to dark tonal values still, wet into wet. I've decided to go a little bit more again on these cooler colours to create some distance. I'm just painting some mid-tone washes here and then dropping in mid to dark tone washes damp into damp using a mixture of the greens and some of those violets that I used above. So I'm working on some darker washes now, really trying to get sort of to that sort of business end of the painting, I call it. So don't be afraid of the dark. It brings out your light. So I'm using my size 14 brush 
and it's a mixture of the magenta, a bit of the quinacridone rust and a touch of ultramarine just to create a lovely dark tonal value, working wet on wet and then coming down on the left hand side here over that over those sort of green hills there and using a little bit of brush show again. I actually decided to use turquoise brush show and gave it a spritz. And uh, as you can see here, that's the end result because I found it was a bit overpowering. Never be afraid to spray off. As you can see now, the painting has dried. I've taken off all of my masking fluid now and I'm just softening the edge where the spray has hit the water. There's a lovely soft sort of spray there. So I'm just lifting off. Think of this as a technique rather than your correcting mistakes here. So I'm just softening some of the hard edges with an old synthetic flat brush and then lifting off with my paper towel so step six which is my final step is to paint darks highlights and details not necessarily highlights if you don't want to use white paint so I use gouache to create some highlights obviously there's lots of highlights here at the moment with the masking fluid being removed but I'm just painting in now some of the darks building up those dark rocks in the water there and in the foreground using my size six brush and I'm using the card now to scrape off so you are getting some lights here but it's by using some of the dark paints and it's created some really nice rocks there and what I'm doing now is I'm just using white paint from a tube of paint so this is a technique to get this effect on the waterfall so I've got all these abstract marks here on the waterfall and I'm just just using white gouache with my size six brush working wet on dry and just sort of scraping some of this or scrubbing rather some of this white paint over the top here to hide some of the marks and it's really effective how it, it gives those abstract marks of shadows in the waterfall. I'm also using the white gouache in the water working wet on dry for some highlights there. I haven't actually added much water to the gouache I'm using it straight from the tube. Where I'm spattering, I do add some more water and I'm just spattering here and there. I've actually decided to put a little bit more dark around the waterfall here using ultramarine, a little bit of Payne's Grey and some magenta. You could just use the Payne's Grey and magenta and I'm using a natural sponge to very delicately sort of press and tap some textures here and there. I also decided to put some trees in the distance. You can see some. So I'm using my size four brush, just using a dark, a little bit mixture of ultramarine and the quinacridone rust, wet on dry. So I'm finishing off with a final spatter using my size six brush, just the white gouache watered down. I'll also spatter a little bit of yellow as well watered down just to give the whole painting a sparkle and it just stops me from overworking. So here is the finished painting. It has lots and lots of texture. I really hope you've enjoyed it and that it inspires you to maybe have a go at painting this waterfall or something very similar. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments section below. And if you'd like to see more tutorials like this on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to my channel where you will get updates of my latest tutorials. And if you'd like to have more in-depth tutorials, check out my Patreon membership. Thank you so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.